And we're back, everybody. And now you see the cast of characters who have joined me here tonight. Daryl Waldrop on the far end down there. Not looking too much different than the last time you saw him, probably. Got a few more wrinkles, but mean? otherwise, Daryl's looking pretty good. Got my hair cut today. Huh? And now, ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce to you Mr. George Shin. George, don't let this guy over here, you know, rattle you in any shape, form, or fashion, because he's a loose cannon oftentimes, especially when that red light comes on. But we welcome you to uh, News Channel 5 in the Middle Tennessee, sir. My pleasure to be here, Hope. Thank well, you so much for having us. Absolutely. And I know that you and Daryl go way back, but Daryl and I are kind of the welcoming committee for you here uh, tonight. You've just moved uh, to Music City, as I indicated in the comments earlier. You're a former NBA team owner. Mm -hmm. the Charlotte and the New Orleans Hornets. Mm -hmm. You sold that uh, franchise in what, 2010? Am I wrong? Thereabouts. 2000. Is that right? Some I don't. I don't. 2000 win. Seems like. Yeah. Uh, what's that number? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Seven, three, seven. Two, seven. <laughs> two, uh, sometime in 2000. Yeah. And now you have moved to enough. Middle Tennessee uh, because there's some pretty good uh, things going on here that you're going to get involved in. So welcome to the city. Welcome to Nashville. And welcome to our program tonight. And uh, we're just tickled to death that you're in town. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Absolutely. So Absolutely. What about... Um, what, what are your plans? What do you What do you think you want to do? What do you hope to do? What uh, What's coming up? For, well, for I George think Shen? I hope the best way to describe it. I've been uh, I've been very fortunate to, um, uh, you know, going through the NBA experience is quite an experience for me, and <laughs> on the team for over 20 years, close to 25, and uh, went through a, a health issue with cancer. Right. And fortunately, I'm okay now and, and doing well. And uh, but during that time, it was sort of a lesson to me that I needed to make a few changes, get my life in the right direction. At uh, going toward the tail end of my life here, or autumn of my life, whatever you want to call it. I like and to say the back nine. The back nine. The back That's nine. Daryl and I've been on the back nine for a while. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, we, we decided to uh, uh, come to Nashville. I have a son that's in the music business and a younger son that worked for me with the Hornets, and I wanted to be near my boys. And so uh, uh, we picked this city uh, because it was music, and that's what both my boys are involved in. My right. youngest is running uh, or is playing role as the owner of the Sound Emporium. And we have a wonderful lady, Juanita Copeland, that's running mm -hmm. uh, the Sound Emporium. But we're doing a great job. It's, it's been there for a number of years. Got still the legends come there, and it's just a great show. My son, my oldest son, is a uh, lead singer for a group called Live. Mm -hmm. Which is a rock group. Yeah. And, and he lives here and just loves it. So, And we're close to the kids, so... Uh, we came here primarily for that, and that I've been blessed in my life, and uh, I've just felt like it was time for me to start giving back, mm -hmm. and, uh, and that's gonna, exactly we're, what we're, we're going to talk do. about one of the big projects that's uh, on your radar screen. But first, I want you to connect the people out there with your friendship with Daryl, because you guys go back to Charlotte and yeah, to uh, yeah. uh, well, racing. I, I've been a fan of this guy's for years and years and and uh, just always loved him and I tried to encourage him to get on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> Did you know, really? I yeah. don't know if you've well, ever I, I seen him with the I dancing. Could've. Have you ever seen him dance? Mm. But yeah. I had you. <laughs> oh, but something just happened to come up. Didn't well, it? my wife didn't think it was a very good idea. And I, I mean, I could have, personally, I could have done it. I'm pretty sure I could have made it on, on Dancing with the Stars, because I got some good moves. I would have paid. I would have paid good money to see that. I got some good moves, but my wife said that she thought that was not appropriate for me to do. So I think she's probably right. So I backed away. Mm -hmm. But uh, okay. yeah, but I know I've known George. Uh, he, we have so many mutual friends. Rick Henry, one of my best friends, one of Rick's, uh, one of George's best friends, and you know I've been in Charlotte. I raced out of Charlotte my whole career. Mm -hmm. right. uh, I went to Charlotte the first time in 1972. And uh, on Husbeth Road over there by the racetrack, and I've basically been there ever since. That's where my office in Charlotte is, and everything else. So, but I've known George through the, you know, basketball team, Felix Sabatis, Rick, all those guys, that that crowd. 
uh, and I've known George for a long time. But I got to tell you a quick story about George. I didn't know he was in Nashville, and uh, he called me a few weeks ago, called me well, maybe three or four months ago, and asked me could I help him get a car. And I thought, okay, George, I'll, get, I'll help you get a car. And you didn't even put your name on it. Yeah, but here was the deal. <laughs> he didn't want it for himself. Oh, really? He had watched on Channel 5 a news story about a couple. Do you I remember that? I remember that story. You remember story. that story? I do. I do. Uh, the the yeah. woman was working two jobs, and then the husband got hurt on the job, and he was right. couldn't work and had kids, and she uh, turned. She had a wreck in her car and turned over, and I, I guess it was a ditch, and spent a whole a night, a whole night in the upside down in the car, and almost died. And uh, George saw the story, and uh, he said, "I want to do something for that couple. Wow, that and I, I want to give them a car." Great. So it just kind of pulled at your heartstrings, eh, George? That's what he said. He said, yeah. sat there and, and made me, it just brought tears to my eyes. Wow, wow. That's a great story. That's a great story about another well, great this story. Well, guy, this guy just stepped up. I called him and asked if, uh, I didn't tell him I was wanting it for me. I said, I'd like to get a car, and if you can help me out and give me a fair a fair deal. Right. And uh, he said, you can count on it. So, uh, um he so helped us it, out, and that's yeah. where I got it. And, uh, he was there to greet him, and it was just—it oh, it was, it was, it was really great sweet. Story. It, it's so great, sweet. Great By story. the way, speaking of cars, this man has got how many? Forty-three classic cars. Class? I'm talking classic cars. Is well, probably fifty. Some, fifty. I'm sorry, I shortchanged you. I didn't mean to. Well, that's all right. No, that's fine. That's right. fine. So about fifty. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Okay. But uh, I had the opportunity to be out at your place uh, last week, and you weren't there. But uh, we we saw all the cars, and I just stood there and just marveled yeah. at uh, at all of those classic cars. And some uh, were just you know I think there's a Bonnie and Clyde car there, mm -hmm. isn't there? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. One that was made, used in the movie. Right. 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 So we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Now, did you and Daryl? Uh, you weren't part owner of anything that he no. drove, did no, you? No. no they, aren't you glad? No. <laughs> no, hey, no, I, I love to. Uh, what are you talking uh, about? No, but man, you know, back in the early days, Daryl, you'd wreck something. No, I never. I, I learned. I learned my lesson about that. I learned right away. In order to eat, you had to finish a race. <laughs> you know, you That's didn't. Good. You remember they had heat races, ten lap yeah. heat races, and of course, I wanted to win every time I went on the track, and so I'd wreck my car in a ten lap heat race and never make it to the feature. And the feature's <laughs> where all the money was. You know, a heat race would pay $50, the feature would pay 500 Right. And I'd run over somebody in a heat race trying to win a stupid trophy for a heat race and couldn't run my car in the feature. So I learned early on, man, if you're going to make a living, you're going to have to you're going to have to finish the race first if you want to finish first. <laughs> you know, talking about making a living, I don't know how many people know your your story, George, uh, but, but here's a guy who, you correct me if I'm wrong, finished last... In your high school mm -hmm. class, 293, 201. Uh, yeah. So and there, you were number 293. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. And was. yet, and yet, you went on uh, to become, you know, the man that you are. You had enough money to buy an NBA franchise. How did you finish last in your class and do all of this? Well, I really had to struggle to get there, and I would uh, say to, so. to be last in my <laughs> class. But uh, no, I, I just. Uh, through sheer work, hard work and determination well, I, and I had guts. a mom that just really uh, loved me and kept me to, you know, encouraged me to keep my faith and that I could be anything I wanted to be, but right. I had to work at it. Right. I had to have faith and let God be my guide. And uh, if you got God, you pardon me, you can go as high as you want to. That's pretty good formula for all of us, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 And no question. So I just, uh, you know, I've had my ups and downs. I've had problems I've been through. All of it, right, but right. Uh, life experiences. Uh, that's that's right. what I like. To that's call. right. A lot of the things I've I've been through have been like stepping stones to help me get to the next level. And mm -hmm. I've had a lot of things that I felt like I deserved or I <clears> wanted, <throat> but it just didn't happen. And uh, but when I follow His lead. You know, and I, I'm sorry. I don't. I, I'm a believer, and I just. You don't have to apologize for that. Like no, to, no, we have to like, this program. Thank you. I don't you. want to no. preach, but I do. Preach it, brother. Preach it. Uh, but I do believe, and I. I just feel like if you, uh, every time I felt like I was big enough or strong enough to do something by myself, that's when I failed. Yeah, right. Oh yeah. But I when I kept yep, yep. my focus on him and kept him leading me, uh, I just if I had kept in that path all the way. It's no telling what I've been able to accomplish. Well, you didn't do too badly, George. Well, I've been very blessed, and, uh, you, and you, we're, we're really at the giving back stage. You, you, you and, made 
you made most of your money in business schools, didn't you? Initially, got started. Initially, yes. in that, and uh, and you was a, you were a janitor there, right? Yes. To begin with. Yes. Is the story true that you were a janitor there, and somebody came one day and wanted to see the school because they were thinking about going, and there was nobody <laughs> to show them? Pick it up from there. Oh yeah, I was uh, uh, I was a student at this business school in Concord, North Carolina, and uh, I got low on money. I got low money. I didn't have any. <laughs> That's pretty low. And uh, I was... Uh, That's about out of gas. <laughs> yeah, and I was trying to uh, uh, figure out ways to uh, to make money, and I went to the people that ran on own the school and told them I, just, I wanted to stay in school. I, I had been working in a cotton mill, and that I wanted to uh, uh, earn some money. What could I do to earn some money? And they said, well, we'll give you credit on your tuition, and we'll let you clean up the school. And I said, okay, I'll be happy what to do What a deal, it. huh? And, uh, but now, I, I didn't do major janitorial stuff. I did, I cleaned all the chalkboards, I had to clean the commodes and bathrooms and all that stuff. And, uh, uh, but in on weekends, I'd come and do mopping and do major cleaning up on the right, weekends. Right. And on this particular weekend, it was late Saturday afternoon. I'd already finished up. I had a date, and uh, in the back they had a little, you know, place I could dress and a, right. with a sink and all that. And I kind of fluffed up and and was getting ready to go. And I heard somebody, and I looked up. Miss two cute little girls at the front door. And I walked up to the door, and. Uh, they said, uh, sir, do you work here? And I said, yes, I do. Now, I didn't tell them I was the janitor. I made it. I, made <laughs> no, I, bet you did. I mean, they were real cute. Especially they were cute. You know, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and, they are and, and they said, <laughs> we, we would like to um, uh, uh, enroll in this school. Can you? I said, oh, man, I know everything about this school. Come on in here. <laughs> you were a salesman from the get-go, yeah, weren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. About like this guy here. Yeah. And so... Uh, uh, I brought them in, showed them around, and gave them a catalog of the school application. I said, you know, um, if you want to come back, just fill us out and bring your application fee and bring it on back to the office here. Well, that was on the weekend. That Monday, they came back. And I was in class, and they came back and asked the uh, girl at the front desk they wanted to see Mr. Shin. And the girl said, Mr. Shin, we don't have a Mr. Shin here. And uh, so she buzzed into the director of the school and said, these girls out here are asking for Mr. Shin. And he said, that could be George. Uh, tell him to hold on just a minute. So he called him in the office, and he sent the girl up to get me. And they told him that... We brought our applications back, but we're not going to give them to anybody but Mr. Shin. So I came down, walked in, I saw the girls, and I knew, boy, I was just beaming. I just hugged them, you know, and I said, did you bring that application? <laughs> so naturally, I got... He was dealing money. Yeah, 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 oh, man, yeah. I was wheeling and dealing. And uh, so uh, uh, what happened at that point, they hired me as a part-time recruiter and a full-time janitor. And they were giving me credit on each application that I got in, and and uh, I mean, and I I'm I'm bragging, but it's a true story. They uh, uh, they hired me. I was the only student recruiter they had. They had two part-time recruiters and two full-time recruiters. Well, the next semester when classes started, I had enrolled myself more than all four of the others together. Wow. Wow. Great so story. Great story. Uh, I got fired from my janitor's job. I don't blame you. Working full time. That's a true work. rags to riches yeah, story, yeah. isn't it, George? Right. That's pretty and, good, isn't it, Daryl? Uh, I like it. That's a little better than Daryl did. I like it. <laughs> he started with a, he started with a grease rag. We, in his we, we had something in common. I didn't have any money either. <laughs> <laughs> I had guys that worked for me. I'd pay them. I'd go write them a check, and then I'd say, "Can I borrow that back?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> George, you you uh, as you said a moment ago. Okay, I, I, we'll talk about the NBA and and, and, and all that, but I want to get this in off the front. We'll talk about it again on the back side so folks that join us in the next half hour won't miss anything from the first half okay. hour. You know how TV works I that understand. way. You understand that. Um, 
you're here uh, to give away some money. Mm -hmm. to do some things to help some people and some organizations and one in particular that I have been involved with for 20 something years and Daryl knows all about too and that's the Tennessee Baptist Children's Home. Right. You are getting ready to do a big, shall we call it a shindig? That's <laughs> what we call it, yeah, that's it. Kind of tell, tell us. Oh, that's wrong. That's <laughs> just wrong. <laughs> that's just wrong. How'd you get involved in that and how, what's, what's that all about? Well, we, uh, um, just started well first of all we we got to the point we knew we were going to contribute money and try to help right and do good and uh, uh, we started we had somebody working for us that was checking out and he told us about the children's home so we went out and visited <laughs> and and I you know I'll just be brutally honest uh, my vision of a children's home was one with a dorm that loaded with bunk beds mm -hmm. and that community shower and all, all that kind the, of yeah, yeah. And uh, I was so impressed with what they do and how they take care of these kids. Uh, we visited and, and they've got homes that they have uh, adults, male and female, husband and wife team, that live in those homes and take care of these kids like they're their own and right. some of the kids are theirs right. and they're, they're different types of kids, they're different races, colors, everything and it just, uh, we went through and they were doing homework together and just they were like a family, they were just and I said man this is this is great what they're doing for mm -hmm, these children. Mm -hmm. And you wanted to be a part of that. We wanted to be a part of it and so we made, we talked to them and said let's uh, uh, let's, let's see what something. we can do to yeah. help you, and, right, right. and uh, we can contribute some money to you, or we can put up some money and have a big fundraiser. And we've got a uh, uh, fundraiser set up for October the 12th, and uh, the Whites are going to perform October the 18th. October, you know what I said? 18th. 18th. Yeah, it's all right. 18th. Okay. okay, October. 18th. Maybe we'll do it the 12th and the 18th. Okay, we, no, no, it's no, the 18th. No, my wife will have a heart attack if we do that. Yeah. No, but, uh, rehearsal will be on the 12th. Yeah. <laughs> Show will be on the 18th. 18th. I like that. Uh, yeah. But anyway, on uh, we've got the Whites that's going to perform that night, and the Whites. Uh, Sharon White is Ricky Skaggs' wife. Right, right. Ricky's a good friend of ours. Right. and He's right. going to try to be there. Yeah, he guy. said yes, he would he be is. there right. yep. and yep. that uh, he's coming off of a tour that day. Well, I happen to know that there's quite a list of Middle Tennesseans that are going to be there for that. Yeah. Well, we're looking forward to it. It's, and I understand it's just taking off and we got some of the representatives here right. uh, from Absolutely. the children's home yeah. and maybe they've got something to add. They're doing an well, incredible job. Well, you got Todd Pendergrass and Jeff McGinnis, all of those yeah. uh, guys yeah. who are helping. Uh, I'm involved in it. Uh, Daryl's involved in it. Uh, Vince Gill is uh, lending his yeah. uh, support to it as well. So it's going to be a great night and uh, folks will be hearing more and more about that, but it is October the 18th. Right. It's going to be at your ranch mm -hmm. and you're out in Leaper's Fork. Well, or close to Leaper's it's Fork. It's Franklin. It's on Franklin, Carter's Creek right. Pike. Yeah, right. We love it out there. Yeah. We just, oh, yeah. it's, it's great out there. We it's, just love it's beautiful. it. It really is. I got to take a break, folks. We'll take a breath. Folks, our phone number. Dale, what's our phone number? 737 uh, 7767. Uh, Thank you. And we will return, everybody. 737 <laughs> 7767. Right I hope they see it. <laughs>